Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S23 and compare it against the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE and see which specific phone you should go and pick up. Now, I will tell you, both these phones are great. You know, the S23 is clearly the newer one and probably the better one overall. So I will leave both these phones linked down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both of these phones, they both kind of have like the same type of design kind of going for it. But the S20 FE came out almost three years ago back in 2020. And this was supposed to be, I guess, a re-release, not a re-release, but it was supposed to be like a cheaper model of an S20, which I found was really cool. And I you know, think that in and of itself was a really cool thing that Samsung did like during that time. So on the front of this specific phone, we have a 6.5 inch, and it's a pretty decent panel, a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display. It's a 120 Hertz panel. And overall, it looks pretty good. You know, it's a whole punch display. It's a bigger panel overall than the Galaxy S23, which I actually do think is pretty cool. But it's not, you know, I wouldn't say it's better than the S23. I would definitely say the S23's panel is better. But the S20 FE's panel is still pretty good. And I don't really have too much to complain about it in that standpoint. Now, when the Galaxy S23, this phone is a little bit smaller. So keep that in mind. But it's not like substantially crazy amount smaller. It's a 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display that you're getting on that specific phone. So that right there, you know, might make you think that the S20 S23's panel is worse. I've seen a lot of people say that because the panel is smaller. That is not the case. You are getting a very good panel overall on something like the Galaxy S23 than on something like the Galaxy S20 FE in my opinion. Now on the bottom, they both have USB Type-C ports, which is great. But on the Galaxy S20 FE, you actually do get, this is crazy, a micro SD card slot on that phone. That is still something that is very cool. A lot of phones do not have that type of capability, but luckily for us, we do still maintain that capability on our Galaxy S20 FE, which is a really cool thing. And on the back, this is something that's been very interesting between both phones, and I think a lot of people forget about it, but this was actually one of the first Samsung Galaxy phones to kind of bring back that frosted plastic back. It was a very interesting approach from Samsung. On the Galaxy S23, we actually do have a full frosted glass back which is so much better than that standard plastic back that we were getting on the previous, you know, S20 FE. So another one of those things to keep in mind, is it a deal breaker? Not really, but you are getting an overall way better feeling phone on something like the Galaxy S23 and then on something like the Galaxy S20 FE. So at the end of the day, please keep that in mind. Now, some other things, I mean, you're getting IP certification on both phones, which is great. You're getting very good build quality on both. You're getting wireless charging and reverse wireless charging on both as well. So there definitely is a lot of overlap. Like, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of like flagship type of features between both phones. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to go and get a phone that's more of a flagship, getting a Galaxy S23 might make more sense. In fact, you can, like I mentioned before, you can easily get a lot of flagship type of phones out there, like the Galaxy S22, for cheaper than probably what this thing is in the brand new market. So you just kind of keep that in mind. I don't even think you can buy this thing brand new anymore, but it's just one of those things to keep in mind at the you know, back of your head. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now in terms of the camera department, we are getting kind of a little bit of a different camera setup between both, but they're very much the same but you are getting an overall better, more powerful camera on something like the Galaxy S23 than on the S20 FE. So on the S20 FE, you're getting a triple camera setup, a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, eight megapixel telephoto lens, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Whereas on the Galaxy S23, you're getting a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, 10 megapixel telephoto lens, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So at their core, you are getting kind of some overlap, you know, for sure. So with the Galaxy S23, you, know, you are getting that triple camera setup. And you're getting a triple camera setup on the S20 FE as well. But here's the big things to keep in mind. For one, on something like the S20 FE, it's, you know, much a lower resolution video you can film in. So you can do 4K at 60 on the back and the front, which is great. But you don't have 8K video capability on the S20 FE like how you do it on the S23. So that is a pretty big difference there. And if I'm being honest, that would be probably not a big deal or a big reason to switch to the S23, but it is a really cool feature to have. And anytime I actually use a phone that has 8K, it is a very cool feature to have. And that's something that I always kind of think about in the back of my head. So personally for me, if you're in that situation, you might want to go and upgrade, but it's not a big deal. Both these phones have a ton of capability behind them as well. So it's not like you're going to go from one phone to the other because of, you know, the 8K capability or the features. You're getting a lot of core features, which is nice. But like I mentioned, you are getting overall a better camera on something like the Samsung Galaxy S23 than on the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. So from that perspective, that kind of covers it up there. Now, in terms of the software and the longevity portion, and this is probably going to be the number one 
reason or the number one area where something like the Galaxy S23 is going to outcompete and just outperform the S20 FE. So in the S20 FE, this one came out in 2020, it's probably going to be lasting as long as something like the Galaxy S20. So I say that to say the S20 is probably on one of its last versions of software. It may end up lasting longer. We've seen it happen a few times where Samsung improves its software longevity, but I don't really think that's going to be happening this time around. And I could totally see the S20 FE pretty much ending probably this year, you know, maybe it's not going to be getting One UI 6. Now on the Galaxy S23, this phone literally just started. This phone just started getting updates. So this phone has a long future ahead of it. It's not going to be outdated today. It's not going to be outdated tomorrow. This phone is going to be here for a very, very long amount of time. Like I said, it's just getting started. So if you're planning on buying a phone, the S23 would 100% be the way I'd recommend going, or at the very least, an S20, you know, one S22, a phone that's still going to be supported with software. That is going to be the much you know, overall smarter thing to do than getting a phone like a Galaxy S23 in my opinion, or S20 FE in my opinion. So from that perspective, that kind of covers it up there. Now on the performance side, this is also another very interesting thing. So back in the 2020, the S20 FE had a pretty good chipset. It was the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chipset, and that phone had started with six gigabytes of RAM, and it did go up to eight gigs of RAM. Now that phone was actually a pretty good performing phone at that time. With the Galaxy S23, we now have this new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset with eight gigs of RAM inside of it. So you can spec out each one of these phones to actually have the same amount of RAM, which is actually pretty cool. So I think that in and of itself is a pretty cool thing at the end of the day. So if you wanted a phone that's going to last you the longest amount of time, or in terms of the performance side, you know, the S23 is definitely going to be the overall faster phone when it comes down to it. But that does bring us to a very interesting spot. With something like the Galaxy S20, you know, FE, this is still a very fast performing phone for the most part. Like I said, the 865 chipset was very well optimized. A lot of people still use that chipset for a lot of different, you know, not only for their phones, but also for gaming handhelds and just so many other devices. So I look at something like the 865 chipset and it still holds up very well. Like I said, it's not perfect. No situation out there, no phone out there is perfect, but I do think the 865 chipset was very well optimized at the time and it's held up very well. The HN2 chipset that's inside the S23 still needs some improvements, so it's still going to be a rocky road in the future. But I think Samsung's doing a good job at keeping these phones optimized as much as they can. And I think when I look at these two phones, definitely could have been a little bit better, but it's not the end of the world. And I think both these phones are pretty good when it comes down to it. So from that perspective, that kind of covers it up there as well. Now in the battery life standpoint, we are getting a 4,500 million hour battery on the Galaxy S20 FE, whereas on the S23, we are getting a 3,900 million hour battery. So again, between both phones, both are great. There's not too much to complain about here, but the S20 FE's battery life is probably going to be better overall than something like the Galaxy S23. You know, I found that the battery life on a phone like the Galaxy S20 FE was pretty good. It was a very, very big chipset, which was awesome. So you might be getting it was a very big battery, you know, to be honest. So you probably end up getting better battery life from something like the Galaxy S20 FE than the S23. So to kind of sum up this video, what I'll tell you is, I think both these phones are great, you know, but the S23 is clearly the better one. It is the one that's going to last the longest amount of time. It's going to be the one that's probably going to be here the longest amount of time too. So that would be the one I would probably recommend a majority of people to buy. With the S20, you know, S20 FE, I think that's a great phone. I think it brought a lot to the table when it first came out, but it's kind of getting to its last leg of software. So it's not like one I would push people to go and buy. But other than that, I think both these phones are great and there's not too much to complain about there. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.